Hey everybody, Mark again here at Weatherman Plus. Good morning, good afternoon to all of you. Hope you're having a very great day today. I have a lot of good updates. Uh, I got some bad news and I got some good news. So I will share everything I have with you. Plus we're having some major flooding that's already happening and then the storm didn't even come yet. Now, if you've never been here before, hello. My name is Mark. I usually upload every single day, just not from sundown Friday to Saturday sundown. That's when I take my Sabbath. But hit that subscribe button. I do cover the, all the hurricane season. I do cover our U.S. weather after hurricane season, so I am year-round. Now, I'm showing there's still going to be some intensification that's going to be happening in the storm, not only on its way to Texas. This is what you see now. This is an AM 3K. It's showing you the first 60 hours. But also, if you look at the two models I have, on the very top is the dust. Now, the dust layer shows you, that's from the NASA, that it will hit this storm because first it's going to go west towards Texas. It's going to intensify. But then it's going to get messed up with a lot of shear. But the dust is going to hit it when it circles back around to the right, to the east, of, uh, towards the center of the Gulf. But it will start heading east. And then it's going to head north. The big plume of dust is going to hit it. And it will be on the east side of the storm with that dust where all the rain and all the winds will be strongest. And the video right above my head is showing you the deep layer wind shear. And you can see how the wind shear is just ripping it to shreds on the western side of this system as it goes towards Texas. And eventually it will protect it and keep it close where it's barely on the edge of touching Texas as it rolls the western Gulf of Mexico then gets on land in Louisiana. And remember, I always put links in the description to save you time for whatever it is you come to see. If you just want to see the rainfall or the winds, everything is in the description. But now we're getting where it's getting closer, guys. Now we have a good idea of what impacts are going to be and what timing is going to be. So do me a favor, hit that like button. Let's get the word out so people know what impacts can be so they can prepare and get ready for this storm. Now this is the latest information that I have for 92L. The next update won't be until 1 p.m. But as of 7 a.m. this morning, it was still 25 miles per hour winds. But to be a tropical storm, you need 39 miles per hour winds. And it's got to be sustained winds for at least a minute. But you can see here how it's moving its way towards the western Gulf of Mexico, towards southern Texas as well, and as it goes across the Bay of Campeche. But you can see the path. It will be get suppressed and pushed down from this wind shear, and then it'll get pushed back to the east, and possibly go a little more south again. But it will regroup, head to the east, and then head north. An 8 o'clock update on this system. The next one won't be until 2 p.m. It's still at 90% chance. I have posted this on my community tab on my channel. And now the good news. The good news is, is now it's on a very much weakening trend. Yay. We could just be dealing with a tropical depression uh, intensifying into a tropical storm as it goes on land. Plus, there's another section of intensification for the southeast as it goes from Alabama, Georgia, and South Carolina. It will intensify again. So in about 24 to 36 hours, it'll be making its northward push from today. And you can see the ensembles look at them all they all have it pretty much white which is very very weak almost dead but now you can see the possible landfall for this storm headed towards gulf is either right on the edge outside of houston right in southern louisiana or a little west of louisiana but if you remember from that anomaly i've been talking about towards the end of the month what our potentials are of what these tropical waves can do coming across the mdr in the caribbean I'm still showing that we could have a possibility repeat of this storm coming from Western Caribbean going into our Gulf. Uh, so far it's showing the end of the month, but these things always push back a little bit. So we'd probably be the first week of July. But the trend is so far that it will be a westward push into the Gulf of Mexico. And you can even see it right here on this one as well. It shows it weaker going over to Yucatan, going west in the Gulf of Mexico. And our potential velocity anomaly this morning has really waken up. It shows a little bit weaker of what we're dealing with now, so I'm not showing that that would be a great potential for a strong storm. At the same time, right after it, right around the 25th, it looks like something's going to pop up, and it's going to pop up strong and quick. So we got to keep our eyes open for that. Now there's some things that I'm showing that are still popping out as questionable on the path and track of this storm. If you look at the SpaghettiO models, you'll see that after it comes on land, that it actually could be low riding into Georgia and then strengthen out into the Atlantic Ocean and then curve back and intensify and go towards North Carolina. 
And here's the SpaghettiO for the one that's coming in in the Caribbean sometime around the 28th, which I'm sure will lag behind about a week. And as you see it move through, it does get very big, very broad. It does intensify just a little bit. It gets all the way down to 980, 980 999 millibars. Uh, but I'm not showing anything crazy yet, but it does get pretty big. When I look for the chances for a tropical storm within the next 72 hours, this is the location of where a tropical storm winds could be. And when you go from three days to five days, after four days, it starts intensifying in that one area for western Louisiana. And after five days, it stays there. So it will be a day or two where that sits there. But then when you get to six days, it flings off to the southeast. So with this cold front that's coming down, it could intensify the cyclone as it goes across the southeast for a bit. But when you put it on tropical depression, since it's going to be stronger than that, you can see the path that this storm is going to take. Three days, four days. Now you got to imagine, this is the storm that is bringing. This is going to be the rain. This is going to be the winds. This would put your system right to the west of that. That's five days. It curves around. That puts your system a little bit northern Louisiana, which means that the, the coast of Mississippi, the coast of Alabama, might not see as much rainfall as northern Mississippi or northern Alabama. I'm showing a lot of information is saying that when this cold front comes down, it will intensify this and it will start zooming out of here. So if it does follow this one that zooms out early and curves back to North Carolina, the potentials for that strength is going all the way down to a 986 as soon as it hits the Atlantic, intensifies down to 979 which is on the edge of a hurricane, believe it or not. Now here's where the information is different and it varies by a lot. And not only is all these levels already at flood stage, I'll, I will show you that. This is according to the GFS. It's showing that the system will be a little more eastern as it drags across. And this is the expected rainfall amounts for the south and the southeast. And it does lighten up as it moves across. And this is a Euro. The Euro takes it way more western, which puts your system around the edge of southeast Texas, right below Houston, and you're not getting a bunch of stuff over there, maybe an inch. But this way, if you look at this, you'll see that southern Mississippi will be, get anywhere from one to over two inches of rainfall, which beats five to eight inches, and it gets dry for the southeast, and it's just on the northern half of the south. They will put out all their cones of all the information and I will have all that for you so you know exactly what to expect. Because with this coming on shore like this, it's going to be just like Crystal Bowl. It's going to be spinning counterclockwise and it's going to put a lot of rainfall, a lot of storm surge in southern Louisiana. But a Euro model brings it all the way up to where you do have problems in eastern Tennessee for heavy rainfall, western North Carolina, West Virginia. Uh, Western Virginia, but you can see what it does as it goes across the mid-Atlantic to central US on the way out The wave height and location is around the same area So your system would be right west of this. This would be your winds This would be your onshore flooding going on from the rains just counterclockwise spinning and so far it has southern Louisiana getting the worst of the wave height as it comes on shore and this is at Friday from 4 p.m. for the worst of it but you can see that it moves in. You don't get much until Friday morning at 9 o'clock. Then the waves are going to start moving in for southeast Louisiana. It will be at its strongest right around 4 p.m. And then the storm will fully move on shore. There's another one at midnight as you go into Saturday morning. There will be that second surge of energy that will be coming on shore. And the second will be at midnight for Friday then as it comes on shore fully, there's no, no more coming after that. Now it starts moving to the east by Saturday, by noontime, and the waves will finally move away. Now here's the GFS, and it's showing the same area, same time, except it's showing around 4 p.m. for its strongest, and it's still showing up to 14-foot waves happening. But if you look, you'll see a low-pressure system is over here, Western Gulf, why are you getting all these winds, all these rains by Friday? And then as you go through Friday, it moves through, and this is according to the GFS. So the Euro did pick up on a second anomaly, and the GFS shows that it actually will be gone by Saturday. So there is two different timings, and it is literally 12 to 24 hours apart. 
Another thing I found, the NAM shows that it, when it goes towards uh, southern Texas, when it makes that western push, it will intensify. It will get all the way down to a 990. It will go to a 988, 990. That's because it's getting hit with that shear really hard. And it will still intensify a week into 992. Then it will just jump to 985. And that's the furthest shot we got. This will either ride the coast right here along uh this will either ride the coast right here along Texas as it moves onshore and moves north. That's according to Euro. GFS shows that it actually will come western, but then it will go right back to the east and come more like this. That's why all the impacts are more eastern uh, with GFS. So if you want to know if Louisiana is going to be getting all that rain, we need to find out if this track is going to stay and hug up on Texas or not. The shear is very strong, so I can't see that staying there too long. I can see it actually dying out if it tries. And when we look through the name, which gives us a more detailed, closer look, uh, it actually shows that all the winds will be over to the western gulf because that dry air just suppresses this so much. But the NAM shows that Friday by 1 p.m., that actually all the winds will be over here in the western gulf of Mexico, 80 miles per hour wind gusts. Port Isabel, Texas getting 60 miles per hour wind gusts by Friday by 1 p.m. And just at the beginning of that information is as far as we have, but just the beginning of that, southeastern Texas, Corpus Christi, and the surrounding area will be in 30 to almost 40 miles per hour wind gusts already by Friday at noon. Now, when you look at the 500 millibar height for relative humidity, the dry air, the precipitation, you can see exactly what kind of battle this storm takes on because it takes on all kind of battles and it actually could weaken down to where it don't have a surface low at all for a while before it intensifies again. Now as we go through our day and into tomorrow, you can see how this cold air does come down at 500 millibar level. It does suppress it back, it does hit it and delay it for quite a bit. At the same time, you can see the dust layer moving in from the Western Caribbean, uh, moving in towards the storm by Thursday. And as this cold air retracts back, this dry air from the dust will come in from the eastern side of this storm. And then the five, at the 500 millibar level, the cold air will wrap into this system and start weakening it down. So it's getting attacked from the east and the southeast and at 500 millibar level. And it's getting attacked and wrapped in with this cold, dry air as this gets on land. And when you look at the 850 millibar level, because you saw what it did on a very high. So when you look at the, the middle of the winds, not the not the ground level. You can see that the dry air from the dust does get it on the east side of the system as it moves along, but then it does like a little punch and it stays on the east and southeast of the storm, prohibiting it from moving further to the east. So it does make a more northward push. Look at these winds just driving this system straight north. All these winds are straight north. And you can see how the dry air, the dust, does get into this system as it tries to go towards Texas. This is by 6 p.m. tonight. The low pressure moves towards the west coast of Gulf of Mexico, and then the dust gets into the system by early Friday morning, really affects the strength of it, and stops it from doing any more intensification than it already has by that point. Now, the new intensity model guidance is out for 92L, and it is confirming that in about three days, it's going to get hit with so much shear and so much dust that it's going to knock it down literally to a very weak storm. There is still a couple models that is showing that it can still survive that. It will weaken it down, but it will continue to intensify to a tropical storm towards landfall. Now, a big problem we're going to have with a lot of this, guys, is that your ground's already saturated. It's been saturated. So it wouldn't take much winds to push those trees over as it is. And I'm showing 50 to 70 plus miles per hour wind gusts going to be traveling through the south and the southeast. So it's easily going to be able to knock over these trees from your already saturated ground and there will be a lot of power outages. So please take precautions, do what you can, charge your laptops. You can always charge your phone from a, from a laptop. So that's a very easy way to keep your phone charged twice. And right now, actually, Puerto Rico is 11,500 homes without power, mostly on the western side of the island. Now, Puerto Rico, I do show that within the next five days, you get about a quarter inch of rainfall or lighter. It's not really going to be a whole bunch. Jamaica, I looked for you also within the next five days, 
I'm not showing a lot of heavy precipitation, maybe a quarter uh, of an inch, but there are some spots like the east side of Jamaica that could see up to a half an inch of rainfall, and another hot spot on the western side of Jamaica that could see up to a half an inch of rain, rainfall. So please pause the video, see from where you're from so you can see what your rainfall is. Cause I know that this really does mess with y'all y'all farming. So, And so far for the Bahamas, for the next five days, it looks like it affects mostly northern Bahamas. Uh, Freeport, maybe a half an inch. High Rock, maybe a little more. Foxtown, half an inch. And it gets a little less as you go towards Treasure Cay and Marsh Harbor. And you can see it here, trying to spin up, trying to get some strength. Uh, at the same time, it's getting a lot of wind shear. That's what all this is. You can see the storms going counterclockwise, going from east to west. And you can see the shear shearing it from the southwest to the northeast. So it is getting a lot of good shear. Now, one thing I want you to be very aware of is even though Friday uh, by 9 p.m., you're going to start getting storms. The system's still way over here, and it could even be weakened down to where it's just an upper level low. But you still got this very group of disorganized thunderstorms that's going to be flowing in through the deep south. And the storms will start hitting y'all Friday night around, around midnight. It'll start moving in to the south of Louisiana as this little pressure system is still too far. If you watch it, you'll see it focuses up and powers up a little bit right there as it moves towards Houston as it goes onshore uh, towards southeast Texas. So it looks like towards Houston actually could be where landfall could be. That don't mean you're gonna get the extreme impact because we all know it's all east side loaded so the storms will be east of you. But it looks like its storm does move through uh, the south and all the storms is all on the north of the south, not the deep south. And then as it moves across the south, all the storms stays north of so you don't get all the flooding in the deep south by monday 4 a.m it starts strengthening down to a 995 again with a lot of heavy rainfall as it moves across eastern tennessee 997 and then by monday 11 a.m it's already getting weakened as it moves away and so far with the euro within the next five days uh, you have a chance for houston to get an uh, inch of rainfall lake jackson beaumont texas uh, a couple inches with the heaviness being southeast texas all louisiana southern arkansas western mississippi and it's pretty good amounts you got lafayette over five inches hammond louisiana almost five alexandria five inches now this is according to the euro the gfs shows it's more of an eastern push it don't affect shreveport look like you may be going to get an inch so it don't reach that far up this is where the surface low pressure is going to go so all the wind and rain will be on the east side of it and then as you go from five days to ten days out you get the full track of the storms it could go all the way to atlanta getting five inches uh jackson mississippi could be getting six why southern uh mississippi hattiesburg could be getting only two but this is your rainfall amounts uh in the south louisiana mississippi uh, for what you're going to have for this storm according to the euro and then thin it out as it moves east you got five inches for atlanta you got some for tennessee north carolina also and then greenville getting two to maybe three inches uh, anderson you definitely it looks like three inches but it does weaken down columbia is only going to get over an inch but according to the euro saturday 1 a.m early morning you're going to be getting up to 50 miles per hour wind gusts off southern louisiana then the worst of it will get up to the high 50s and this is wind gusts but all this is going to be going on shore it's going to be pushing wind it's going to be pushing waves it's going to be pushing everything your way so there will be a lot of storm surge you need to watch out for so as we try and get a better timing on this according to the euro high resolution when it gets to saturday on the 19th from 3 a.m all the way till 7 a.m is when you're going to be seeing this wind gust start to come on shore for southern louisiana it will pick up with spots of 50 plus that's what that yellow is as you go through your noon and your afternoon then sunday morning to sunday at 7 a.m it's going to start shifting a little more to the north of these southern states and it's going to ride the central u.s but it will get very high wind gusts especially in the afternoon of over 50 miles per hour as it moves across it will strengthen even more that dark right there that is actually almost 70 miles per hour wind gusts and then you get some very high 60s and 70s going across northern Alabama. It gets all across northern uh, Georgia. And you definitely got 
over 74 uh, wind gusts right there in that bunch by Monday morning. Then it moves across Tennessee, western North Carolina, and southern South Carolina with 60 miles per hour wind gusts. As all this moves from Monday evening going into Monday night and Tuesday morning is going to affect North Carolina with the 50 miles per hour wind gusts. And here's a look from the central U.S. This is starting on Sunday at noontime. You got 50 plus miles per hour wind gusts in Mississippi, Alabama, and it really gets northern Alabama really good. Y'all going to see a lot of wind gusts come Monday. So overnight, Mississippi, early in the morning for Alabama, very serious wind gusts, 50 to 70 plus miles per hour wind gusts, and it probably will uh, be more detailed and get more information, maybe even be stronger. Uh, we'll get that for you. But early in the morning, this is going to be overnight storms. And then as it moves to 7 a.m. Uh, around your time, 7 or 8 a.m., it will get even stronger. Now you got over 75 uh, miles per hour wind gusts for Tennessee, western North Carolina, uh, eastern Alabama now. So it is going to be a while there, Alabama. And Georgia. Georgia gets the, the very big blunt of it. Then Monday evening, now it's really moving into uh, North Carolina, especially western North Carolina with 60 plus miles per hour wind gusts. You still have it for 70 plus miles per hour wind gusts for Georgia, and you're getting almost a 70 miles per hour wind gusts for upstate South Carolina, stretching towards Columbia with 30 miles per hour wind gusts. And you can see that here as it goes from Monday into Tuesday a.m., you get 50 miles per hour plus wind gusts, almost 60 right there, for North Carolina. Virginia, even for Southeast Maryland and Southern Delaware. Y'all get in on this as well. Maybe Southern, Central to Southern New Jersey might see 30 miles per hour wind gusts, but Southeast Maryland and Delaware, y'all will see these winds as this system goes by. And this is why it's so important. We need to know which is the correct path. Because if you look at the models, GFS, Friday, 3 p.m. It shows that you're just now starting to get your storms in Coming in southeast Louisiana, it starts just starting to surge on really good. The Euro, very same time, shows that the storm's not even on yet. That's because this surface low pressure is even further to the west. As a matter of fact, with the Euro, it takes all the way until that evening, all the way to 1 a.m. Saturday morning before you start seeing storms in south and southwest Louisiana. Now this, this is your flood gauges across the whole south. When you see the orange is on the edge of being over uh, its action stage where you're going to be seeing flooding, and the pink is already flooded. Uh, like if you look at these models, southeast Texas, flood stage is 4 feet. Observation stage is 4.5 feet. So it's already half a foot flooding over already, and they have to take action by 3.4 feet. That's what that information means. But if you look at southern Arkansas, northern Louisiana, they're all either a foot or two over the, the observation stage, which is flooding, or up to six feet over flood stage. So there's already a lot of heavy precipitation. There's already a lot of flooding. That's a foot and a half over. That's seven feet over flood stage. And northern Mississippi, it is three feet, uh, two to three feet above flood stage for y'all as well. In southeast Louisiana, over 10 feet over flood stage so it's very saturated ground and then with all this coming now it's just going to be horrible these trees are already saturated these trees are going to fall there will be a lot of power outages but you can see as it moves more western that all this winds is going to be hitting southern louisiana before the system even comes on shore and it is strengthening you can see it turning pink and red and purple as it moves further west so it does have some strength to it as this storm moves west. The storm is expected to be within this cone within five days. And it is anywhere from Houston all the way to New Orleans of where this could start heading. Another thing that we're having on day two, as of tomorrow, there will be a marginal risk for severe weather in the green, slight risk in the yellow. And that's because there's a chance for tornadoes in this green area it's only a two percent chance but like i said before i have seen more tornado warnings come from a two percent chance than any other and this severe weather will move by day three to the ohio valley and this will put severe weather in the marginal risk for the green and a slight risk in the yellow for the ohio valley 
plus ensembles. A lot of ensembles are showing that this could get pushed way west, come right up northern Mexico by Monterey, and come up southern Texas. That's just one. Other ones are showing that it will be a western push towards western uh, Gulf of Mexico, and it will be headed towards Houston. A couple of them show that. One shows it turning into last second because of that trough, headed for Louisiana. Another one shows New Orleans. Another one shows a sharp turn right before Louisiana. And another one shows an even sharper turn could go over Florida. But so far, with all that surge, within the next five days, this is where your heaviest of your rainfall can be. And it's anywhere from Port Arthur all the way to Montgomery. So y'all need to be aware that heavy rainfall is coming on your saturated grounds already. Trees will fall. You will get power outages. All right, now this is an AM3 case so I can show you in southern Florida that you will be having storms all the way to about 6 o'clock in the morning. They will brew up all the way, probably when this video comes out, about 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Then they will strengthen. They got some nasty hail cores in some of those storms as it continues to push by you all evening long and goes into the nighttime with more storms. And it looks like they get even weaker as the night goes. So right around 4 a.m. it should just be regular rain, very mild storms. The worst of it is coming this afternoon. Starting around 9 p.m. tomorrow, you're going to start getting storms. That's why they have you under a severe weather watch. Look, you see all the nasty hail cores that is in these storms. It will be nasty, and there is a good chance for those tornadoes to pop up out of those storm cells. By 11 p.m., it's going to get pretty bad as it moves through overnight towards the Ohio Valley. And then Ohio Valley is going to see it around 3 o'clock in the morning as it pushes through the northern half of the states you still get a couple storms that will pop up friday morning with some very nasty hail cores in them you can see them the tornado could easily spin up or some severe weather with a lot of hail out of this storm but you can see how it stretches all the way across by 4 p.m on friday as it moves south Pretty bad hail cores in those storms, even western Pennsylvania at this point. Now, I slowed it down some so you can see it. It does get cut off right here because the name only covers so much, only the U.S. But at the same time, if Puerto Rico is the U.S., how come this don't show up over Puerto Rico? And we can't follow that. That's another topic. But you'll see the storms come across southern Florida. And then you'll see the storms will come in towards the late of the run as the system moves to the west. The storms will be hitting y'all by Friday. And by 7 p.m. Friday, you have a big band that's going to shoot across northern, uh, from southern Louisiana, southern Mississippi. And you'll see the beginning of what these storms are going to look like. At the same time, God bless every single one of you. Hope you have a very blessed Wednesday out there today. Uh, I will upload earlier from now on. I just had some te technical <laughs> difficulties today, but I've overcome problem fixed. And to the biggest storm in our life, Psalm 52. Why boastest thou thyself in mischief, O mighty man? The goodness of God endureth continually. The tongue deviseth mischiefs like a sharp razor working deceitfully. Thou lovest evil more than good, and lying rather than to speak righteousness. See law. Thou lovest all devouring words, O thou deceitful tongue. God shall likewise destroy thee forever. He shall take thee away and pluck thee out of thy dwelling place and root thee out of the land of the living. See law. The righteous also shall see and fear and shall laugh at him. Lo, this is the man that made not God his strength, but trusted in the abundance of his riches and strengthened himself in his wickedness. But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. I will praise thee forever because thou hast done it, and I will wait on thy name, for it is good before thy saints. Amen. I appreciate every single one of you for visiting my channel today. I wish the best for all of you. Please prepare for power outages. You already have saturated ground. It wouldn't take much to blow those trees over.
all glory does go to Yahweh, God of Jacob. Hmm. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah, guys. Y'all have a very blessed day.